Coming up in today's video, I'm going to be talking about two new potential battery suppliers that could be producing 4680 batteries for Tesla, the new made in China standard range Model Y and Tesla's choice to use iron phosphate battery cells, as well as Elon Musk's recent tweet where he talked about the fact that Tesla is increasing their V3 superchargers from 250 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts. So without further ado, let's dive in. Elon Musk has made it very clear in the recent past, for instance, like at Battery Day, that although they plan to produce their 4680 batteries in-house, they still need to source as many batteries as possible from their current battery suppliers like Panasonic, CATL, and LG Chem. However, as Tesla moves more and more of their vehicles to the new 4680 battery cell format, they will need less and less of the old cells and more of these new cells. Their battery supply needs are about to change in a drastic way. While Tesla currently uses 18650 and 2170 cells in their electric cars, Tesla's new structural battery pack, which will be found in the new Model Y 2.0 and the Cybertruck, will all use 4680 battery cells. And of course, with the Cybertruck being such a big hit, and also Tesla's Model Y selling extremely well, I can only see these battery needs increasing as these vehicles continue to gain in popularity. Although Tesla does have a good plan in place to produce a large number of these 4680 batteries, I still believe they're going to need quite a bit of help to meet the huge demand they're going to have for their new vehicles. Tesla is obviously going to need their battery supplier partners to be producing these 4680 batteries in addition to their own supply. Now we do know that Tesla's key battery production partner Panasonic is currently building out a prototype production line for these 4680 batteries and they could soon be producing these batteries for Tesla. However, the Korea Herald recently reported on two new potential 4680 battery suppliers for Tesla. LG and Samsung SDI. Here are two key excerpts from this article. Samsung SDI and LG Energy Solution have developed samples of cylindrical 4680 cells and are currently conducting various tests at their facilities to verify their structural integrity. Also, they have provided specifications of their 4680 cells to their vendors. They also mentioned, Samsung SDI is currently planning to build its first battery cell plant in the US, securing 4680 cell orders from Tesla would add impetus to their expansion plan. Now Tesla already sources batteries at Gigafactory Shanghai from LG. However, I don't believe Tesla currently has any battery contracts with Samsung SDI, so Samsung SDI would be a new battery supplier for Tesla. According to a recent Reuters article, Samsung SDI has also been in contact with Stellantis and Rivian to discuss supplying batteries from a potential US factory. However, since Tesla is the largest EV manufacturer, although contracts from Stellantis and Rivian would be great for Samsung, this contract from Tesla, this potential contract and getting a deal with Tesla to produce 4680 batteries would be an even bigger deal for Samsung. If you've been enjoying this video so far, please remember to click that like button. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. Now I'd like to move over to the Made in China Standard Range Model Y and discuss how important this vehicle is, how it's selling, and also I want to talk a little bit about the actual lithium iron phosphate batteries that Tesla is using in these vehicles. In a recent article, Tesla Roddy reported the following. The Chinese Ministry of Industry and Information Technology has approved the cell in production of the new Model Y standard range, giving explicit details on the vehicle's specifications. The documents reveal that the Model Y standard range packs a 60 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, more commonly abbreviated as an LFP battery. We'll talk more about this LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery in just a minute, but I want to talk about how this new Model Y variant stacks up to the other variants they're currently selling in China. With the addition of the new standard range rear wheel drive Model Y, Tesla now offers three variants of the Model Y in China. 
and this substantially more affordable option puts the Made in China Model Y within the reach of many more potential buyers. This new variant also helps close the price difference between the Made in China Standard Range Model 3 and the Standard Range Model Y as well, which could convert many would-be Model 3 buyers into buying the roomier and slightly more expensive Model Y instead. As expected, this more affordable Model Y variant is being received very well in China. Moneyball on Twitter mentioned that according to a Beijing sales associate, the new standard range variant exceeded 10,000 orders the first day and over 5,000 orders the second day. Also notice how efficient the standard range version of the Model Y is when it comes to how many kilometers or how many miles of range can be achieved per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. However, do note that when it comes to these range estimates, Tesla, of course, adds the following fine print. The cruising range is only an estimate, pending regulatory approval. Also, the range estimates for the Made in China Standard Range and Long Range Model Y are based on what they are referring to as the GB driving cycle, whereas the performance version available in China is based on the more well-known WLTP test cycle. Based on the drastic 114 kilometer or 71 mile range difference between the made in China long range all wheel drive and performance variants, it appears like the GB driving cycle is very generous. For instance, for the US made version of the Model Y, the difference between the long range all wheel drive and performance variants is only around 37 kilometers or 23 miles. So what I'm trying to convey is the fact that likely if the made in China standard range Model Y were tested under the EPA test cycle or the WLTP test cycle, the range estimates would be much lower. Despite this though, the made in China Model Y is an amazing vehicle and offers a great price point for the Chinese market and I have no doubt it will do extremely well. Now I'd like to briefly discuss why Tesla would use lithium iron phosphate battery cells in this new standard range Model Y and the reason mostly comes down to cost savings. Lithium iron phosphate batteries do not contain costly cobalt or nickel which makes these batteries less expensive to produce. However, this does come with a catch because the energy density of lithium iron phosphate batteries is lower than nickel based batteries. Because of this, LFP battery cells are not well suited to long range vehicles. They do, however, work well in low to mid range EVs like the standard range Model 3 and Model Y and allow Tesla to offer a low cost variant in China. Also, as a side benefit, the cycle life of these lithium iron phosphate batteries is usually greater than nickel based cells and they have less chance of thermal runaway or fire, so these lithium iron phosphate batteries are generally safer as well. Lastly, Elon Musk just revealed on Twitter that Tesla is upgrading their V3 superchargers from 250 kilowatts to 300 kilowatts. Now this does bring up the question of which Tesla vehicles will actually be able to meaningly benefit from this increase. With current Tesla battery technology, even on a V3 supercharger, the 250 kilowatt rate can only be briefly sustained to protect the battery pack. If you take a look at the typical charging curve, the rate drops the closer you get to a full charge. While I do believe this rate increase will slightly benefit the charge times and slightly increase the charge times for Tesla's current generation of vehicles, I believe vehicles equipped with the 4680 batteries will benefit the most. Vehicles like the new Cybertruck and the Model Y 2.0, which will be manufactured at their new Gigafactories. This of course fits well into what we know about the 4680 batteries, which in my opinion should be able to charge faster than their current battery tech. So in conclusion, I'm really glad to hear of two more potential companies that could be making 4680 batteries for Tesla because they're going to need all the battery cells they can get their hands on. In addition, Tesla's release of the standard range Model Y variant in China is shaping up to be quite a big deal and will likely be one of the best selling Tesla vehicles in China. And I believe these V3 supercharger upgrades are quite exciting and could lead credence to the fact that the 4680 batteries will charge faster than current battery tech. I can't wait to see how this all develops. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way through to the end. I'd like to take a moment to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help make this content possible. 
A special thank you to my performance supporters and also the other supporters listed on the screen. If you'd like to find out more about the Patreon community I've set up and how you can support my work, I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you so much.